like this in our case, in case you had any question about what the shape of a box is. But you take interval, cross interval, cross interval, et cetera. Okay? But you can see the book for that if you want. We're just going to do in R. And of course, the picture is, what does it mean to be nested? Well, you might imagine, for instance, I n being uh, marked by interval endpoints a n, b n. And nested means, uh, what, do you, what do you think nested means? Just take a wild guess. a1, b1, interval in between. a2, b2, a3, b3, a4, b4. OK. Everybody happy with my characterization of nested? OK, these are all nested intervals. Yes? All right. Now, uh, the claim is there's a point in the intersect point in all these sets. Can you see which one? I see, some, see Willie doing this, but what's that? Which one? Which point would you like to take? Well, how do you know there is one? Why is there a point in here between A4 and B4? And A5 and B5? Well, we're trying to show it's not empty. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Well, what limit point? What do you, what, what, what? OK, you guys know enough from week two of this class, week three of this class to, to, to suggest a point that's in here. Give me a candidate. Give me at least a good candidate, and I'll give you a hint. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. Oh, supremum of the A's. Why does that supremum have to exist? A bunch of real numbers. <laughs> it's, they're, in fact, upper bounded by B1. Very good. So here we go. This, there's a point here. We'll call it x. So nested, uh, let me just write down, finish writing down what nested means. Nested means uh, if m is bigger than n, then a n is less than or equal to a m, is less than or equal to b m, is less than or equal to b n. Everybody happy with that? And so now here's our proof. Very, very nice idea. Very simple. Let's let x be the supremum of the AIs. And uh, it exists, and I'll just, we'll just tell the reader it exists because they're bounded by B1. Happy with that? We have a candidate. It exists. Now, explain to me why x must be in all these intervals. Is it clear x is at least bigger than all the a's? Why? <laughs> it's the supremum. Good. So clearly, x is bigger than every a sub i um, for all i. Because it's the supremum, yes? Because it's the soup. That's enough for your notes. Why is x less than all the b's? This one you have to be a little more careful with. Why is x less than, and maybe one way to do this is, tell me why x is less than b52. Why is x less than b52? OK. Uh, David? Uh-huh. OK. 
Okay, so let's let's see if we can write this down. And we're claiming x is less than bn for all n because by def uh, bn is an upper bound for all a sub m by, um, I'll call it smiley, where smiley is this fact. So what are we saying? You give me any b, I claim it is bigger than every a. And the reason is, uh, you give me any b, like bn, it's bigger than every a because bn is bigger than b52 is bigger than a52. But B52, if you want to show B52 is bigger than A100, well, you know B52 is bigger than B100, and B100 is bigger than A100. You can do that for any M. Okay? And so now this is enough to show that it's in all. So I'm just going to end the proof right here. Okay? And uh, this is, so this is such, a, this is such a, a, a important concept. I just want to show you. I'm going to finish with... And now a very, very quick proof. This is an aside, but I'm going to give you a new proof, a different proof. Oh, this is so cool. New proof that R is, un, uh, R is uncountable. It's going to be one of those proofs where you go, what? What? Did you just do that? Using this fact. It's not in your book, I don't think, but this is so fun. OK, here we go. Um, Proof, R is uncountable. Well, suppose it were countable. Suppose R is just a, a sequ can be listed in a sequence. So it's countable. OK, suppose it were countable. Ready? Are you ready for this? Because if you blink, you're going to miss it. OK, yeah, I suppose it's countable. Well, that's fine. x1 x2, x3. OK, these could be hopping around here. Well, you can't stop me from choosing an interval, i1, in the real line. So these are intervals uh, that misses x1. Would you agree with that? I can choose an interval. You, you certainly can't stop me from choosing an interval that misses x1. Oh, OK. Uh, well, then I'm going to do, I'm going to choose another interval, i2, that is in i1, so it's nested, but misses both x1 and x2. Well, clearly it's going to miss x1 because i1 did, but can I choose it so it misses x2? Yeah, sure. How about that one? Yes? Would you agree that I could continue this process, that I'll choose i3 and i2, that misses, in addition, x3? Why? Because I've got this interval, and wherever that point is, I can, I can choose something on either side of it that misses it that's still a closed interval. Yes? So I have a nested sequence. By this theorem, there exists a point in all these intervals that is not on the original list. End of proof. There exists an x in all the i sub n in the intersection of i sub n, and x is not in the list. In the list. Done. Pretty nice. And of course, you'll have to step back and say, well, wait a minute. That was way too easy. So how is that? Where did we do the hard work? Because we obviously did hard work for the other proof, right? So where's the hard work here? Well, it's, it's in there. It's also in you know, all the machinery we built up with Suprema. Okay. OK, have a great day. Next time, we're going to prove the Heine-Borel theorem characterizing compact sets in Euclidean space.